This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring defense attorney, Hidden Killers daily contributor, and host of the Defense Diaries podcast, Bob Motta. We're talking about Rex Hiraman, the man accused of being the Long Island serial killer, and specifically Asa Elrup, his estranged wife. I'm curious to get your reaction on this. She wants the 300 guns that were confiscated returned that are in evidence now arguing that they're marital property worth, worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. And they probably are if you have hundreds of guns. But at the same point, we're talking your husband is being accused of being the Long Island serial killer. And we took guns from your creepy home, which we may or may not have killed somebody yet as well. Is this a reasonable request from Asa, she, I, I'm just so fascinated by this character because she's unlike any other significant other wife, spouse of killers I think that we've seen in the past. And the only way I can describe it is almost tone deaf to what is going on around her. She's definitely dealing with her own trauma, no doubt about that. Uh, but I, I am continually surprised, and I shouldn't be, by her requests, her behaviors, uh, seeming lack of empathy for what her husband has allegedly put so many people through. I know she didn't do it, but I think a lot of us would look at if our spouse was accused or something like this, we think maybe they did it. We'd be a little more apologetic or just empathetic to those around us. Not necessarily give me my guns back. I'm going to sue the police department and Oh yeah, let's start a GoFundMe and let's get about 55 K in the bank, but still complain that my house is a mess a month after uh, when it could have been cleaned up a bit. Yeah. It's a lot. I'm curious about the guns, though. Is that a reasonable request? No, I don't think it is. No. And, and law enforcement is not going to care yeah. that, you know, that, that she wants the guns so that she can sell them to get the money. I mean, they've got bigger issues. Uh, they are not going to value property over lives. They're going to do what they need to do with those guns, and, and they're going to sit and their evidence locker until such time that they think, I mean, look after the cases are resolved, if they can ever get, you know, and that's the other thing, you mm -hmm. know, when we're talking about a serial killer and we've got potential active cases all over the country. I mean, like, does the investigation ever end? I mean, mm -hmm. we're talking about Raider. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, it really probably I, doesn't. It probably goes on indefinitely because God knows how many there are. Exactly. And, and I think you're going to be hard pressed to find a judge who is going to, you know, basically say, okay, well, you know, let's get this poor gal her guns back because, you know, she needs money. It's just like, she's not coming it, as bad as you want to feel for her because she was married to that guy. Like she makes it really hard. She does. And I'm not, I, I'm the first uh, onset of this. So you feel horrible. And then the behavior just gets weird. And, and I don't know, yeah. to, to me, it almost gets, bordering on suspicious it makes me start to wonder maybe y'all should look a little bit more into this in law enforcement and see what she knows when she knew it if anything at all because this is just bizarre 100 man and I, I think we had this conversation way back when yeah like talk when you know the lawyer for one of the victim's families like popped off and saying like you need to be looking at her yeah he did and he took a lot of heat you know, for his statements at the time, but the more she talks and the more that she does kind of the more, what he was saying makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's like, she, she's, I'm certainly not willing to say that she's seeming complicit. No, but like your description was very apt in terms of her being like that tone deaf, like just not realizing that this is neither the time nor the place to be bringing this stuff up. Mm -hmm. Like, this is like people are not going to be caring about her getting those guns back. No one is going to feel empathetic because she's out of a few hundred grand because it appears that her husband was a monster. Yeah. I it, mean, it, it's like at this point, all we care about is that trial, getting justice for the victims and figuring out if this guy killed more. Yeah. You know? I feel and, like she's almost taking the spotlight a little bit away from him the last handful of weeks with the behavior and that just seems utterly bizarre that the spouse would be doing something like that uh, i don't know i do i say man like like again you know i always fall back on gacy but you know it's just because i happen to know everything about that case sure. and it's like carol who was only his wife for i 
six years, maybe five years, maybe less. I think two, maybe they got married in 71 or 72. You know, they were divorced in 75, but you know, it's like, I, you didn't get that vibe from her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, cause you always wonder, it's always the first question. How didn't the wife know? Sure. Right. Like how, like this guy was gone all the time. What did you think he was doing? Like, it, did yeah, you ever get yeah. uh, the conversation? Like, well, like, where were you at last sure. night? All night. You know, it's like, so like, those are natural questions for any human being to ask, especially those of us that are married mm-hmm. and my be asking me constantly <laughs> if I was I'm like, where are you? What are you yes. doing? Yeah. You know, digging bone bill, you know, like she would have cracked the case long before law enforcement would have guarantee you. Yeah. Uh, so it's like when you have her acting the way she is and saying and doing the things that she's doing. Man, it, it gives you a really weird feeling about her. It's not know? the same vibe that I get from any other survivor family member, you know. And, and I totally understand and and have empathy and and have great respect, especially for someone like Carrie Rawson, BTK's daughter. I have never felt, you know, like these people really truly knew much was going on. With this one, I just don't know if she wasn't saying anything. I, my opinion would probably be she had no idea. But the more she talks, the more it's like this is. Uh, I, yeah, she, right? it's like the more she talks, the more I think she might have been yeah. complicit. But had knowledge, you yeah. know, like it's simple. It's like that's just my gut. Mm-hmm. I'm not basing anything other than my perception. But yeah, I feel the exact same way. It it, it gives me. It's very off putting. Yeah, you know, it is. it's it's not a good look for her. And you know, I would think that her attorney might. If I was her attorney, I'd be saying, you know what. Let's take a step back. I, I hear you on the guns, but you know, let, let's wait for a bit. They're not going anywhere. They're, you know, they're going to be held safely. Mm-hmm. Enforcement's not going to turn around and sell them. I understand that you want to get the money. However, you know, it, it's a bad look for you. And beyond that, I think at the end of the day, it could turn some eyes towards you. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to be cognizant of what's going on with this case. And I think that we need to be careful, you know, like I, I, I would just hope that her attorney is having those conversations with her. If those conversations are not taking place, I don't think the attorney is doing a very good job. You're consuming the hidden killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple podcasts and get an ad free experience. When you sign up to be a true crime today, premium plus member exclusively on Apple podcasts. More of the hidden killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.